Welcome to Topic 1, Lesson 1 of Quantitative Analysis in Anthropology. I'm Professor Peregrine. Today we are going to be talking about levels of measurement. Before we do though, I want to give a little bit of a discussion about a question that all of you are probably considering, which is why study statistics at all? Why are we doing this as anthropologists? Don't we study people? Why do we need statistics? Well, to me there are two basic questions in anthropology. They are, what does it mean to be human? And the second one is, why aren't all humans alike? The first question is the more humanistic one of anthropology, the one of meaning. What, what, is, what does it mean to be a human being? What is all this about? Why are we here? What do, what do people do in different cultures? How do they feel? How do they love? Those kinds of questions are essential to anthropology. The other question that is also central to anthropology, and I think actually is an older question in anthropology, maybe the, the original question in anthropology is, why isn't everybody alike? And that question comes out of colonialism, and anthropology is a product of the colonial era, going out and meeting new people of different cultures and trying to, ex to understand and explain, first of all, why are these people like this? And I think later on, what, what is life like for these people? Okay, for the second question, we're really talking about variation. Why aren't all people the same? Why doesn't all people, everybody do the same things, wear the same clothes, behave the same way? It's a question of variation. And statistics, describe variation elegantly. If we want to talk about meaning, about what it means to be human, about what it's like to be, or what the experience of a person in another culture is, words can do a great job of that. But if we want to talk about variation and understand variation in detail, statistics do that elegantly and efficiently. We're going to learn in this course exactly why that is and why I think statistics are something that all anthropologists should know and use. They are an addition to language in helping us to talk about the variety of lives that are out there. So, describing variation begins with an important concept and that is a variable. What is a variable? What is variation. Well, a variable is anything that varies. But more importantly, it has to be able to be measured. So a variable is a measurement of something that varies. And what that means is you can look at height, and some people are very short and some are very tall. Variation in height, you can measure it in centimeters. Anything can be measured. First question in anthropology I mentioned is meaning. What does it mean to be human? What is it like to experience life in another culture? Or what is the experience of people in another culture? That actually can be measured. With enough creativity and enough time, anything can be measured. But not everything ought to be measured. Meaning, should it really be measured? The experience of someone? In those contexts, words and maybe photographs or film would do a much, much better job than statistics in describing that. But if we're talking about height or weight or arm length or anything else, uh, those measurements in centimeters is going to be much better than saying that person's relatively small, or wow, that person's really tall. It's better to say that person's five foot three and the other person's six foot three. One is small and one's tall. So anything. Anyway, not everything should be measured. And I want to put up here a quote that is is sort of a stereotype of what statisticians think. This is from uh, uh, 
19th century thinker Lord Kelvin, uh, who, from whom the Kelvin scale of temperature, if you know that, comes. And I love this quote because of its arrogance. When you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. When you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. That's bull. Lord Kelvin, you're full of it. No. There's lots of things that can be expressed in words and pictures and paintings and poetry and all kinds of things like that, much better than in numbers. But there are also a lot of things that are much better described in numbers, and that's what we're doing in this class. In order to put something into numbers, we have to do what's called operationalization. We take an idea of something we want to measure, we operationalize it and turn it into a set of numbers. Now to do that, we have to have a measure that's valid. What that means is that it measures what we think it's supposed to measure. Later in the course, we're going to spend some time talking about validity what it means in more detail and how to measure it. We also need to have a reliable measure, which means that if I take that measurement and then you take that measurement, we come up with the same number, that it can be measured again and again and again reliably. We have to be concerned about precision, how precise we are or can be. And going with, going with that comes error. And there's lots of different forms of error we know all data we collect, all variables, all numbers, there's error in them. We want to minimize error, or if we can't minimize it, we want to correct for it. And part of doing statistics is, and in measuring things, is to deal with error and with limitations on our precision of what we can actually, how precisely we can measure things. So given all that, I want to move on and talk about specific levels of measurement. The, and levels is a kind of a weird way of putting it, but I think after I discuss it, you'll understand why it's called that. These are essentially the three forms that variables can take. The first one is what is, what is called nominal. It's sometimes called categorical, sometimes called discrete, but nominal variables are little pigeonholes, little boxes. There's only, there, there's a category. So a good categorical variable is men, woman, male, female. That's a category. You're either male or you're female. Problem with that is that we know not, all, not everyone falls on a male-female gender line. There are people who vary along that line. And so by calling someone male or someone female, we're actually putting them in a box. And we know that in fact, that box has maybe no sides or it has sort of squishy sides that, that not everyone fits in well. Many anthropologists who focus on that first question, what it means to be human, find this to be a fatal flaw in statistics. That what it does is take people, assign them a number, and by doing that, stick them in a category in which no given individual fits because everyone is unique and everyone varies in lots of different ways. That's a misunderstanding of what's going on with statistics because statisticians, and you as you learn this, know that very well and know that what we're doing is something artificial in order to measure or to operationalize a concept. We know that that's an operationalization, it's not real. We're using it to measure it and to try and gain understanding and knowledge from those measurements. Some anthropologists go so far as to say it's unethical to do statistics because you are assigning a number to someone, you're turning that human being into a number. 
I find that just really an extreme reaction. We are assigning a, a, a value to someone, but that to me is no different than calling someone male. You can use a word, say, this person's male. Or you can use a number, one is male. We, we describe and assign and put people in categories through words constantly. So we're sort of doing that here, not sort of, we're doing that here with numbers. And I want to make that clear because actually when we talk about diversity, which is variation, isn't it? We can describe and, and understand people's diversity, both of a group and of an individual, where they fit into that world of diversity much more elegantly and with much greater precision than we can with words. So if we're concerned about diversity in anthropology, statistics is a tool we can use to much better understand diversity. Getting back to measures of, uh, measures of levels. Levels of measurement. Nominal variables are those categories. Male, female, young, old, up, down. There can be groups of them, and we'll talk in a minute about freshman, sophomore, junior, senior as categories. Junior, uh, primary school, junior high, high school, college. Each of those are categories. The next level is called ordinal or ranked data. Ordinal data has a starting point and goes in order. So if you think about it, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, are categories. Put a person, category of freshman, category of senior. So that's a nominal variable. But it is also at the same time can be seen as ordinal because freshman is before sophomore, is before junior, is before senior. There is a rank to them. That happens all the time where variables can be envisioned on different levels at the same time and it's very important we will talk about that. But for ordinal variables, the best example are house numbers. If you go into a street near you, you go and look at the house numbers, you'll notice that they go up in one direction and down going the other one. Here in Appleton, Wisconsin, where I am, street numbers begin at, in the middle of downtown and go up east or go up west. And so here at Lawrence University, we're about 500 east. If I were to go down a block, I might find a house at 502 East John Street. The next house might be 504, but the next house might be 522. That happens often where house numbers are not one, two, three, four, five, but they jump numbers. There's an order there. The further east you go, the higher the number is, but there's no constant interval between them. There's a ranking or an order, but no constant interval. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. There's a ranking there, but there really isn't an interval that you can think of that makes any sense other than I was there first, I was there second, I was there third, but some of you are probably in your second or third year or your first year, but you're actually in terms of your degree progress in your third, a junior, you might be in your second year, but be a junior because of the number of credits you have or something. So that's ordinal. There's an order to there, but there isn't a constant interval between the orders. Interval, sometimes called ratio or continuous variables, Interval data have a constant interval between each of the measures. Money is the best example. You add one penny and one penny and you have two pennies. You, the distance between a penny and two pennies is one penny. There is this constant interval of pennies. Height in centimeters. Each centimeter you get taller. Low down, you go start at zero, high up, you get up to high, 200 centimeters or, or taller. So 
Interval data are kind of what we think of as being data most of the time going from zero to whatever with a constant interval between them. Ordinal goes from zero to whatever, but there's no constant interval. It just is ranked, it gets bigger. And nominal, just categories that, that don't have any interval whatsoever between them. You can't really measure them other than call them a category. Why do we care about that? I just spent a few minutes talking about this. Why do we care? There's a very good reason and it's this. You can do all kinds of analyses with interval data that you can't with ordinal or nominal data. Typically you can get much more precise measures of things if you can do it using interval data because interval data allows you to use probability, which we'll talk about later, and make answers probabilistically, which you can say, I am 50% certain that this person is this because of these characteristics. I have a 70% chance that I'm right in saying this about this culture because I know something about them. 75% chance that they have this other thing. You can make these very precise and probabilistic descriptions of things with interval data. You can't really do that with ordinal data, although there are some cheats, and we'll talk about those, using what are called non-parametric statistics. Can't really do it with nominal data. For anthropologists, unfortunately, we kind of get stuck up here. It's very hard for a lot of the questions of interest to us to make measurements that can be interval. So, this anthropological statistics class focuses much more on how we analyze nominal and ordinal data than most other statistics courses. A lot of statistics courses that you would take out there really focus on interval data and do all kinds of analyses that include oh, multiple regression and cluster analyses and all kinds of probability theory Bayesian inference and things. We're not going to get into that because we got to deal with data that don't allow those kinds of things. And so we're going to focus on that here. That's why we care. There's a side to this, though, that we will talk much more about uh, later on, next week actually, to some extent. And that is transformation. So let's start with this idea of freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Nominal data. You are either a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior. There aren't two freshmen add up to be a sophomore, or a freshman and a sophomore adds to a senior, so this is an interval. But we already said it is ranked, right? So we can think of it both ways. We could turn this around and think of this being first year, second year, blah, 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 to nth year, because some of you might be fifth year or sixth year or further on seniors, um, and I am putting this in here, nth, we're going to be using n to mean a case or individual a culture, a case, whatever we're measuring, whatever the unit is that we're taking a measurement of, n is what we're going to call that, so here nth year is 3, 4, 5, whatever this goes up to, all right? That's ordinal, right? Year to year to year to year. But it's also interval, isn't it? Because there's a year between them. That interval is a year. And we can get into the weird situation that you sometimes hear about things like the typical American family has 2.3 children, right? And then the joke is, well, what's the point third of a kid? Just their head? That's because you're using an interval and making it too precise. You can't have a point third of a child. Well, you could, but it would be dead. You don't measure a point third of a child. Here you can't easily measure a point third of a year, 
and last you change the precision change the measure and go to months but then you go to days right and then hours and then minutes what precision do you need to measure something that's some of the stuff we're going to talk about so here we do have it's better to think of this as ordinal I think that but that order does have a constant interval but the interval so big it may not be that useful Let's look at this freshman sophomore junior senior another way and that would be one credit two credits up to n credits Lawrence you need 216 credits to graduate if you're in the one I don't know 80 or something you're called a senior you may or may not be in your fourth year but you can count up how many credits you get and that's the smallest unit nothing less than one credit unless you flunk and then you get nothing but there's nothing less than one credit so actually this is a nice ordinal measure it's also a nice interval measure because there isn't anything less than a credit when you're doing an analysis you can't say the average Lawrence student has 54.5 credits because that's meaningless just like kids but this is the base unit a credit like a penny um, and so this creates very nice interval data these could be categories right one credit category two credits a category but you'd have so many categories it, it would be crazy calling this interval makes much more sense here this makes sense ordinally there is an order to that this makes sense ordinally but these actually are categories I hope you're not getting confused what I'm trying to say is that we can change levels of measurement by looking at the variables dif differently or using different measures to measure the same thing and I also want you to know that there are mathematical transformations we can do to change levels of measurement for example we can do percentiles you're probably familiar with percentiles if you took a standardized test to get into college or at another time or if you know about your height what percentile or your body mass index those are percentile like measures that tell you where you are in terms of a population you can use those percentiles because there's one percent two percent it's an interval scale to take some characteristic or set of characteristics that might actually be ordinal or even nominal and turn that into interval data ranks are another way you can do that and we'll find out that's a, a transformation used all the time uh, in anthropological statistics because you can take um, nominal data transform it into ordinal data by and actually sort of pseudo interval data by using ranks why am I talking about all this I want you to start thinking like a statistician this is how statisticians think in a lot of classes that would be like math classes there is an answer and there are some cases here where there is going to be an answer but statistics are a tool you use to answer questions or to find patterns and you can use all kinds of techniques to do that and there's all kinds of rules that are meant to be broken or bent in order for you to find a way to understand the data you're looking at when we talk about levels of measurement there are different ways of looking at measures and there are always ways to move between them and what we're going to find is that that's true in statistics in general okay so we're done talking about the levels of measurement and in the next lesson we'll begin talking about how we measure variation through measures of central tendency and then we'll go on to talk about how you can visualize that variation so see you in a while